Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about my League Start Atlas for 3.24 Necropolis, but more so I also want to explain how I'm going to progress and why. So for people who don't know, there is a very big meta shakeup on the Atlas for experienced players or people following Atlas guides for League Start. A lot of early game, mid game and end game Atlases use the keystone called Wandering Path. Wandering Path, along with some other meta keystones, have been removed entirely, but they have kind of redone the Atlas to kind of mix it up a bit. So with that being said, let's jump into it. What Wandering Path did is it essentially made it so your baby nodes are doubled, but your notables are disabled. This was commonly paired with the adjacent map drop node to scale to 100% to kind of find a really clean way for you to navigate your Atlas. But... Have no fear, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, really fast, let me just turn this down. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this. So, I'm personally starting off right away by grabbing uh, Betrayal Chance. Now this right away gives us, what is this? 40% uh, chance to spawn June. For people who don't know this mechanic, this is one of my favorite mechanics in uh, SSF, but also Trade League, it's very good. This is the one that got reworked where it gives a bunch of scarabs now and the boss of this katarina can drop veiled chaos um some things i like to use for my righteous fire build on unlocking crafts here physical damage taken as fire this is typically what i do before like cloak of flame on my chieftain uh plus one area gems which is very good for auras and fire trap uh percent regeneration unlock off of uh, katarina flask so that's huge for life um unveil hybrid chaos this is very good for chieftain for fire and chaos res Fire multi on weapon, fire damage and ignite chance, minimum frenzy on rings, which prevents you from having to use blood rage, uh, increased damage on rings prefix, increased damage during flask effect on gloves, uh, physical taken as fire helmet, and there are even a couple of more, uh, a couple more of them. But this is a, one reason why I love betrayal. On top of this, it also gives incredible experience throughout the entirety of the game. So betrayal is a big fan for me. Now, if you guys have watched my previous ones, you'll know I also go into Expedition, but I like to hold Expedition off till a little bit later. So we're going to be passing by this Expedition here and just simply going straight up. Now from here, this is pretty early on. Uh, I'm not sure I may or may not grab the shaping nodes for the map sustain. I probably will because it's so early, but this is something to think about. And then I'm going to actually poke three points into uh, Delve. Now... The reasoning for the delve is with part of the changes of them removing wandering path they added a lot more chance to find your masters and league mechanics in general so by doing this here we have a built-in 24 percent chance not counting the base i believe to spawn nico and the reason this is important is even if you don't care about delving it gives you access to packed with energy this will give your character a not necessarily a much needed but a really big survivability boost in terms of max res that scales your uh, rf so you take less damage from rf and from all sources you gain a ton of increased damage you can have up to three of these and you get a bunch of movement speed so i'm personally just going to tag packed with energy and we're going to come back to this later you don't really need this in the early maps this is mainly for like i would say your very early red map progression guardian progression things like that but let's go ahead and move on now i'm going to straight up beeline straight over to this news keystone so these here are giving us scarabs but i'm personally going to avoid scarabs right now and i'll talk about that in a second and this right here is a new keystone this is called unwavering vision your maps cannot be modified by fragments other than divine vessels i'm okay with that at the beginning of the league i'm not putting anything in i'm just trying to get map completion right Scarabs cannot be found in your maps, but it does not say scarabs cannot be found in your safe houses. So later on, we're going to pivot more into June, and that gives us safe houses. Safe houses give us scarabs. So I'm going to go ahead and yoink this. From here, this is when you kind of decide what it is you want to do. Uh, we're still pretty early on, so if you're trying to go full into June, you want to go ahead and allocate pretty much all of your betrayal nodes. So you would swing down here like this for two. You want to go ahead and grab effective leadership you want to swing around here and grab bribery i'm personally going to wait on june because 40 percent chance to spawn is already pretty high and i'm going to see like just kind of how it feels another really good one over here specifically for safe houses is grabbing test of loyalty 
which makes it so they have an extra rank so you end up just building up more safe house intelligence when you are interrogating for people who don't know what safe houses are whenever you open up the betrayal board there are these four little things you see and those are basically the safe houses when you run them it builds up the like katarina fight essentially another good one to take if you're zooming through your maps is actually over here intelligence gathering so we're gonna wait on that though what i'm gonna do first is i'm gonna go ahead and poke my way over here so let's start counting because we gained 20 bonus skill points one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, doesn't matter here, we're not using it, 14, 15, 16, 17. And the purpose of what I just did is the following. Coming up through here is giving us Kirak chance. It's not a lot, but it's four right here, plus five, six, seven. Seven percent chance at Kirak mission per map completion. Kirak missions um, can help fill in a void of bad RNG. So say you're like league starting, and you are on tier four maps, and then you run a map and you get a tier five, you run a map, you get a tier six, you run a map, you get a tier seven, run a map, you get a tier eight, but then in your tier eight map, you somehow don't drop anything, and now you are stuck going all the way back to tier four maps. It doesn't happen all the time, but it definitely can happen from time to time. Kirak here is a great in between where if you have no maps available and maybe Kirak's not selling anything, you can open up a Kirak mission, go run that map, and then get a map drop to kind of resupply where you were. So I'm a big fan of Kirak, and then of course, grabbing these map nodes here allow me to uh, essentially turn lower maps into higher maps, helping out your progression. This is something I definitely want to drop later, but for league starting, this is specifically what I'm aiming towards. Now, after this is done, you have to kind of figure out where you are. If you are really enjoying the Pact with Energy Sulfite that you have gotten every couple of maps, it's time to capitalize on that. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and look into Chance to Find Nico. So if you come down here for just four points, one, two, three, four, this is already 40% chance to spawn Nico. That's incredible. It is such a few amount of points for such a massive, massive gain. Now, by doing this, you also can respec already. You don't really have to, and this kind of comes into the other topic of if you want to just start with the Pact with Sulfite right away, you can. Otherwise, you could put this point here and remove these two. I'm personally going to just leave it alone, and the reason I say I'm going to leave it alone is I'm going to want this node later for Expedition. However, I don't really like running Expedition until kind of like late yellows and red maps. So at this point, I'm probably just trying to gear my character up and be a little bit stronger. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do at this point here <clears throat> is let me just go ahead and check Nico. So there's just, just a few more maps here for Nico, and this is another 16%. Now, what I just picked up here is Voltaxic Sulfide Veins and chests found in your maps contain doomed spirits. I'm, I'm just going to assume this is some type of monster density, so I think it's valuable to take. I don't really know what the doomed spirits are, but that's pretty much why I'm taking them. If you want to capitalize and go more towards this, you can come down here for three or four points into here, and you can actually grab your remaining nodes, which should hit you 100% chance at Nico. This is also going to be very good because it pairs later in with Expedition. Okay, so at this point, I'm personally going to go ahead and grab um, Test of Loyalty. This is going to make it so executing my members, they gain an extra rank, which will make it much easier to run safe houses. Um, when I say easier, I mean it's easier to build the safe house intelligence to run it. Now, down over here, there is Syndicate members basically get extra, like they get equipment, but they drop more stuff. I'm going to leave this alone because this actually will make them hit pretty, pretty hard, especially in red maps when I'm running on a four link. So... I'm going to leave this one alone, but it's a nice thing to kind of look into. Then, of course, I'm going to grab Intelligence Gathering since I'm going to be kind of blitzing through my maps and getting more Safe House Intelligence. From here, I am going to go ahead and commit more to Betrayal, and I am going to go ahead and grab... Immortal Syndicate members in your maps are more likely to offer to bargain for items. Um, the bargaining for items is pretty much where a lot of your loot comes from. Um, this is where the, another thing I didn't show on the little sheet is you can get movement speed boots with like onslaught on kill Effectively freeing up a flask. Those will definitely sell as well. But people love grabbing boots early league um, Down over here. It's just basically extra chance to get an additional syndicate member So I'm kind of going with that. So now I pretty much have full betrayal on my board Remember if you decided you don't want to go betrayal board You have the option of going the other route which I was talking about which is the expedition the Expedition node also synergizes extremely well with Pact with Energy because you can get all of your Sulfite first on your Pact with Energy 
and then do the expedition with a bonus 45% movement speed, 105% increased damage, and three max all res. So to do the expedition route, what I'm going to go ahead and do is first grab extreme archaeology. Extreme archaeology is going to make it so we just detonate one big bomb. So we basically take a bomb, we place it down, we make sure it doesn't stay immune to fire, and we go and explode it. There are some things you have to pay attention to. Expedition is an extremely rippy mechanic. The primary way you want to do it, let me see if I can get a quick clip for you guys. Sorry, I didn't have this uh, ahead of time. Uh, but the primary way that you want to go ahead and navigate expedition, it, why is it doing that? Oh, there we go. Um, oh, you know, it's my partner anniversary. The primary way to do expedition here, this is going to be uh, not exactly what it's going to look like, but it's very similar. I spawn all the mobs, take a portal. Then I walk back in the portal. So now all the mobs are spawned. And it's kind of mandatory you run a phasing flask. So that's a quartz flask. Um, from there, I basically will turn on RF, press my flasks, try to throw a fire trap, but you got to be careful because there's going to be like a billion mobs. And once you get the Hinakora 5% explosion, if you're using Elemental Prolif on your gloves via, I think it's Searing Exarch, or you're using a Barracks Respite, which is a ring that I'll be talking about on League Start, it will kind of look like this and everything will implode. Then you pick up your loot and you go on and that's pretty much about it so that is basically the expedition strategy for making currency so this is why i really like extreme archaeology but again you have to be careful with some damage mods on there like giving mobs crit when you don't have crit damage reduction giving mobs bonus chaos when you don't have good chaos res you also have to be careful of one other thing which is monsters cannot be ignited or unaffected by ignite that will also break your chieftain build so moving on a little bit more um, this is basically just giving us, basically you're just going to take all of this juice in here. It's going to make your giant explode even bigger. This is going to make it so your, uh, maps 30% chance to have an extra additional suffix. It's all just good stuff for expedition. Um, from here, I would say the most important one is coming over here and grabbing Tuyan. Tuyan is basically a guy in expedition where you exchange currency for literal currency in PoE. Uh, if you don't want to do that, that's still okay, although it's definitely beneficial. Taking Tulian and taking Danning um, influences your logbooks. So what this means is when you in, uh, interact with the expedition, essentially, there will be four NPCs you could get. You can get uh, Gwen, you can get Rog, you can get Tulian, and you can get Danning. On League Starts, these guys sell for the most. This guy prints currency, and this guy allows you to pick any one of these three. So for sure, these guys are kind of the way to go. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and go three points down and just grab my Buried Knowledge. This increases the chance of logbooks dropping, which is primarily how I make my currency. You could also run the logbooks, but I'm lazy, so I just sell them off. No problem. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick up my expedition. From here, there's only one more important section to grab, which is down here, right here. You can see it. And this is basically just extra chance to spawn an expedition. I like to take this last personally because instead of getting an expedition every map right away, because I'm still going to be focusing on climbing my atlas, I want to make sure that when the expedition spawns, I have an increased chance at a logbook and I have an increased chance that it's going to be one of the two guys that I would personally prefer. Then from here, I pretty much can just kind of scoop up this and that should pretty much be my starting atlas. Uh, of course, when everything is actually done and completed, I can go ahead and wipe off this part. And then one other thing to do is obviously when you are running your higher tier maps, like your tier 14, um, you want to go ahead and slap on one of the influences. For this, I will personally go with Exarch because Chieftain doesn't care about fire res altars. So I'm going to hit this gateway, pop up over here, sneak down this way. Oh, sorry, not that way. This way here, grab the bonus pack size. Then you can also sneak up here come this way towards the altar bonus chance, and then these are now pack size nodes. And then from there, I would personally just fill in what I personally enjoy. I'm a big fan of shrines. They make the game more enjoyable. If I'm strong enough and I can tackle the content, I'm gonna go ahead and spawn more monster packs with more difficult and rewarding packs. I have to see how spooky this one is though. This is an interesting one. Also, you wanna go ahead and pick up bonus quantity. This synergizes very well with expedition. I'm not taking the inner circle because I don't have wandering paths, so I can't buff them up to double, and I'm not currently running any of these league mechanics here. As a big fan of shrines, I'm going to capitalize on the shrines. 
Then if we go back to the beginning again, we have extra shrines right here. And at this point in time, there is no way I need this anymore. So I can go ahead and drop this. We're at 127 of 152. That means I could even remove Unwavering Vision and we're actually still free on our points. Now you don't actually have to do this. Remember, we're gonna have multiple Atlas templates, so you don't have to actually do what I'm doing here. You could just work on another one. I'm just kind of explaining an idea of what I want to do. At this point in time also, there are these nodes here called uh, mounting modifiers, which scale the effect of your modifiers on your maps. This makes it so the maps are more difficult because the mods are stronger. Example, 100% monsters, uh, Monsters gain 100% of physical as fire would go to like 102%, and then that'll just keep scaling up. However, that gives us bonus quantity and monster pack size. But this is something you have to be careful with, especially on league starting. You want to make sure you can handle this. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. The last thing I will plug in are league mechanics. I know people are going to ask, what about the Necropolis stuff? We're actually positioned in a very good spot right here for Necropolis. So um, you basically have corpses in your maps have 100% increased chance of meta modifier crafting. These are typically the more expensive ones. So this looks like something very juicy. Over here, you have uh, increased chance to have tier, modified tier rating crafting outcomes. And then corpses in your maps have increased chance to have unique crafting outcomes. So we have access to this one right here. Because we're taking this Eldritch Gateway, we're also located right over here. Um, these ones are pretty cool because these are the embers. One of the embers, for example, is like dropping tattoos, right? So pretty cool stuff over here. Uh, and then because of our location here, we can also go ahead and potentially remove something to hit um, like basically over here. This is the randomized one, so I'm probably not going to take this, but there are some cool nodes over here like gain Gravekeeper's Boon when you collect a corpse. I don't know what that is. Haunted Monsters of Unresolved Anguish have a chance to leave an additional corpse. And then the last one is down here, which is actually pretty good. This makes it so... Um, um, so this one basically makes it so the mods on the monsters like you know increasing monster damage is weaker however uh you get less rewards and then here i think it's the opposite so some interesting ways we can definitely traverse our tree i also don't plan on keeping betrayal and expedition 100 percent. usually i will drop one or the other typically i will drop expedition um and normally i would drop betrayal but now that we're in favor of kind of blitzing katarina that's much more my style so i'm pretty excited to see how that goes anyway that's pretty much about it. There's a whole bunch I could just keep on rambling, but we're trying to keep this more league start friendly. So that's kind of where I'm stopping here. Um, so I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all in rate class.